Welcome back to Cody's Movie Cave. It's Sunday night, so you know what we're doing. Ha uh, House of the Dragon recap. Man, oh man, did they deliver this week. Last week was a little meh. Episode 7 upped it. It was so freaking good. So, let's let her rip, Tater Chip. Alright, so we begin Episode 7 with a funeral. Wasn't the kings like we were thinking. This was uh, Lady Lena, Laner. Anyway, Damon's uh, new wife who di died in childbirth last week. Um, it's her funeral, so so we have everybody there, right? We got the king, we got uh, Crazy Butt, Alicent, we got all of their kids, we got Damon and his two girls, we got. Princess Rhaenyra and uh, her children. So yeah, this sucker's a ticking time bomb, right? <laughs> Family dysfunction at its finest. So, funeral happens. Everybody sort of chatting amongst themselves. Night's coming. Uh, and they're like, it's time to go to bed, right? Everybody, let's go to bed. Well, not everybody goes to bed. Things happen. Let's unpack them. All right, so first up, where do we even begin? Man, oh man, exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, pretty much right off the bat, throughout this whole funeral, Rhaenyra and Damon has been swapping goo-goo eyes with each other, which we knew that was coming eventually, right? If you've read the books, you know that's coming. So anyway, they go on this uh, moonlight stroll on the beach, you know, it's romantic and all that good jazz. And uh, Rhaenyra winds up kind of confiding in Damon, and they swap a few little arguments here and there of, you know, why, why did you leave me all those years ago? And he was like, well, you were a child then, and this, that, and the other. And they wind up kissing, and they wind up, you know, and other things that we won't say on, you know, this programming. Keep it PG, you know? Anyway, so yeah, that finally happens. It's a little on the weird side that, you know, considering the nature of this relationship, but it's House of Dragons, you know, anything goes, right? So, that happens. Big moment. Right? All right, later on the other side of the island or wherever we're at in Driftmark, Eamon, the second son of the king and lady Crazy Butt Alicent, which is what we'll be now naming her, decides he's going to get the great idea to uh, boost a dragon. That's right, he's going dragon jacking. <laughs> you know, like carjacking, but it's dragons. It's dragon jacking. Anyway, so he decides to steal... Vagar, which is the dragon of uh, the late, uh, which is kind of off-putting. I mean, why this little this little crap head decides he's going to steal the dragon of the the person they're at the funeral for, Lady uh, Lena Laner, whatever her name was. Uh, yeah, he decides, hey, I'm just going to steal it. She's dead. I'm going to take it. So yeah, he winds up and uh, decides, hey, you know what? This is my dragon now. And we get a pretty cool shot of, uh, you know, him flying around on it area-wise. Then, of course, the two daughters, the Damon and the late lady, sees him stealing the dragon. And uh, when he returns back to Driftmark, decides to confront him over it. Well, oh well, does that go crap up, as they say. Because he ain't having it. And so he... Gets in a fight with them, two girls, which is poor character on his part. You should never hit a girl. Why is he doing that? Anyway, so here comes Rhaenyra's two boys to the rescue, right? They start, you know, fighting, and he makes some insults about that uh, their father is not really their father, which everybody knows, right? Okay, it's kind of hard to get away with that. Um, anyway, so they wind up scrapping and, and uh, tussling, and one of the boys pulls a knife and cuts Eamon's eye from its socket. 
right? And so here's where the drama's coming, all right? You can never, you can always count on some kind of family squabble with this show. And we didn't di get disappointed with this episode. So, they come in, you know, everybody's there and they're squabbling and, and Allison's uh, trying to get to the bottom of why her son's eye is no longer in its socket. And she is royally ticked. Get it? Royally, you know, ticked. <laughs> anyway, so... She's all ticked, and uh, the king's trying to get to the bottom of everything, and, you know, Rhaenyra's boy's got a broke nose and, and got really beat up by Aemon, so she's ticked, and uh, things just kind of explode into this dramatic dysfunction. And so the king, he's and his old crypt-keeping look, looking self, you know, because he's... Uh, I mean, he's gonna look like uh, poor Schmeagle in the next episode because he's they got him so aged up. But anyway, he's like, I gotta get some answers. You better tell me, boy, what's going on. And uh, you know, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra's boys tell her what actually happened. You know that the this young little dirt bag uh, insinuated some pretty terrible things to her boys that their father wouldn't. Their father. And so um, the king's questioning Eamon with his eye hanging out and all that. And is like, you know, where did you hear this stuff from? Where did you hear such vile accusations? And um, the boy just kind of glances over there at his, at his mother, which is Alicent. And so we all knew that's where he heard it from, but he don't rat her out. He says it's Aegon, the, the older son. And uh, so, yeah. Things just kind of kind of went bad from there because Alicent's like, I, you know, the king's like, everybody just make up, apologize, let's go about our business. You know, it's a, it's a bad thing, but let's move on, right? And nobody better ever be making any vile accusations about my daughter and my grandchildren again. And Alicent's like, that just won't do. I want an eye for an eye, pretty much, paraphrasing here. And uh, the king's like, no, we're not going to do that. We're not doing it. And uh, he turns around, walks off, and she pulls a blade. She's ready to cut somebody, right? And uh, pulls the blade, goes running after them. Rhaenyra catches her, and so they sort of, in a holding match right here with, with, with the blades and and uh, so everybody's starting to take sides and ruckus or Christian Cole is coming to Allison's aid. And I like that Damon sort of got in his face and was like, nope, we're going to let them handle this on their own. You ain't going nowhere, Jack. I may let you beat me in that little tournament thing, but I will straight up mop the floor with your butt. Waiting for that to happen, by the way. And so in a turn of events... I don't know if Rhaenyra slipped or if she actually did it on purpose, but somehow her hand comes free and Alicent slashes her uh, her break. What looks to me like her brachial artery, because blood, bright blood's going everywhere. That's arterial blood there, Jack. Anyway, so yeah, she kind of slipped up and did a no-no there. Assaulted the the princess, the heir to the Arn throne. Man, oh man, was that bad. Um, so yeah. Needless to say, a funeral slash reunion is a bad idea when you're mixing Targaryens and High Towers and Valerians and all that. This is one dysfunctional, screwed up family. Anyway, moving on, because that is not even the best part of this series this season. Um this episode, rather. I'm so excited, I'm tongue-tied. Anyway, so, in a crazy turn of events, um, Rhaenyra winds up pretty much, I would say, proposing to Damon, and Damon's like, you know, we can't do this. We, we can't be married as long as you're still married to Lenor. Uh, and, um, you know, they're, he's unhappy with everything anyway, so he don't want to be involved. So, a plot and a coup formulates between these two, which is filmed really well, I might add. So Rhaenyra and Damon are sitting there kind of conspiring and talking amongst themselves, and, and they're like, you know, we'll have to do something. So Damon is seen, fully cloaked and hooded, making a backdoor 
back alley deal with a knight, which is, you know, which I thought was kind of strange because it's, it's Lanor's man friend. It's the knight he's talking to, and he's like, look, you know, I can give you a lot of money, but you're going to have to do something for me. He wants him to kill Lanor, which is Renera's husband. What? Vile, I'm telling you. But hang on, it's good. So, in a turn of events, you know, this knight, which is uh, confronting Lenore and, and, and is making, you know, he's like, you know, you always look down on me, this and that and other, and a fight, a fight ensues between the two, right? Somewhere else in the palace, Damon is seen sneaking up behind some random person and slitting their throat, killing them. I'm like, what is going on? Who is Damon killing? Why is this going on? Back at the fight, we don't see what happens. We just see a body that is in the fireplace, right? Burnt up from the head to the waist. And uh, we find a very distraught Lord Coulson and his, his wife, his queen, which is Lenore's father, screaming and, and raising Cain and you know, their son's been killed. He's been put in the fire. Or so we think, right? Anyway, so Damon and Rhaenyra are finally wed. They finally come together and uh, unite their houses and become man and wife, which is a little strange, but you know, it, it, you kind of want it to happen, but you kind of don't. But anyway, moving on. Come to find out the random person that Damon had killed was in the fireplace and not Lenore. He is seen leaving with the knight in a boat headed to a ship with a freshly shaved head. Uh, so he is now faked his own death, free from his marriage to Rhaenyra, and off to live his best life doing something else somewhere else. So that Damon and Rhaenyra and be man and wife, and now they've come together, and so that's sort of where we leave things, but also in a tidbit little other bit part before it ends, we can see Lady Alicent, the queen, on the ship headed back to King's Landing with the old sick king. He, he cannot make it much longer. This dude is on death's freaking door, but anyway, we see her having a clandestine conversation with Littlefinger, I mean Lars, which is, you know, this series is Littlefinger, um, having a, a discussion, and he basically says, if you want an eye, I am your man, I can get you that eye, but she's like, nope, we've done enough, can't be seen, you know, being a crazy person anymore, uh, but she says, I may call on you later, and your discretion, so... Yeah, she's fully becoming the butthole villain from the books that we kind of come to expect. You know, we were a little, we were a little kind of, you know, nervous about whether she was going to take her true villainous form or not, because her younger self, you know, back when they were different actresses, were not quite as mean yet. But this one here, whew, crazy. Bad, crazy. Oh, also, I don't know how I left that out. Otto is back as the hand. That's right, her daddy is back as the hand, up to no good, as usual. These two are just, I'm, I'm ready for somebody to be off with their head. You got Allison, Otto, and Sir Christian Cole. I'm ready for all three of their heads to roll. And Lars, four of them, all gotta go. So basically, you know, next next seat, next episode will be our last. I think it's eight episodes, and that will be the eighth one. So we'll get our season finale. Real interested to see how that takes form. I'm ready to see a trailer for that. We'll get in a couple days, hopefully. So, yeah, it's coming to a close. It's been a good one. This episode was awesome. Way better than episode six. Episode 6 was not bad, but it wasn't as good as the others, you know. I'm hoping we get to see one big last action spectacle, you know, either in the form of a dragon 
fight or sword fights or battles or what have you because mostly what we've got up until this point has been political intrigue and that's fascinating you know the political intrigue the family dysfunction but I'm ready to see some big scale like Game of Thrones style epic battles if you've read the book you know that everything's sort of coming to a head and is going to wind up in a civil civil war between all these families, between Rhaenyra's children and Alicent's children. That's right, when they come fully grown, we're coming into a civil war. And Aemon, that little dragon stealer, he's going to be a pretty big deal in that as well when he gets older with his whole eye patch self. Um, so keep an eye on him. Yeah, for sure. Damon excellent as always this was a great episode featuring him the Matt Smith did another great job my fan I'm telling you and so yeah episode 7 House of the Dragon did not disappoint at all so till next time ladies and gentlemen next Sunday night House of the Dragon episode 8 we shall see how things come to a close. And as always, here at Cody's Movie Cave, this has been my opinion, and opinions are like bottoms. Every soul in the realm has one. And if they are not taken properly care of, they stinketh. Good night, all.